everyone welcome back to my channel so this week's demonstration is um, going to be the swatch right here so I'm going to be showing you how to do scallop Thames but I am going to be doing it within the fabric as opposed to doing it right on the bottom now um, you can of course start it off um, right at the bottom and then continue what I've done but I just thought you know if you sort of saw this technique you could actually repeat it down at the bottom um, now it is actually quite simple once you get the hang of it uh, as with everything else and I have actually tried to use a couple of different yarns uh, for this technique now um, everything in between the techniques so and everything in between the scallop Thames heel is just me just doing some sort of pattern which is not really important because the swatch is all about showing you that as opposed to that now um right at the bottom here i have used the shiny viscose um i am sorry about the background noise it is my dog <laughs> um hopefully it's not too loud um okay anyway so the shiny viscose here i think has worked really nicely and you can see the curved edges here so the key to getting that here is of course a stitch which is a tuck stitch um, and it's knitted one way and then the other way is knitted normally and also the main thing is to get your tension right so you need to go as tight as you can really with this technique now you see that this has worked a lot better than this yarn here and i've just done a slightly smaller version of it here and closer together as well um now i didn't actually experiment or test this yarn out with this technique before i knitted this but i just wanted to see what it did um so like like i said you can still see it but it's not as effective as this viscose now for this yarn i do know i could have gone a lot tighter and maybe i could have actually introduced another end of um yarn um for this one i've only used a single end and i just think it looks quite nice so of course you can actually experiment and play around with this as usual you can layer it up as you go along you can have different techniques in between you can actually try and use different yarns um i in another swatch i had used mohair and also um a moisturized cotton which worked really nicely um now if you do know how to do the other hems which is just your basic um pico which is done with a eyelet transfer and just your normal turn up hem you can actually combine different ones so it does not have to be the scalloped one going all over the to the top um now if you don't know the other two hems that i've just mentioned do feel free to comment below and i would be more than happy to do a demonstration for it um you should be able to find it online if not again just let me know and I'll be happy to show you. So the yarns that I've used for this swatch are basically starting off with four ply cotton, shiny viscose, um, tape, metallic viscose and uh, viscose also, but the one that um, shrinks when you press it and sewing thread. Okay, so I hope you do enjoy the demonstration. Um, if you've got any questions, leave them below and I hope you get to experiment loads. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I've gone ahead and casted on a few needles and knitted a few rows in the Versailles Cotton 4-ply. So um, for the first set, I am going to knit in my shiny viscose, which is that yarn here. And like always, I've got all of the yarns I'm going to be using linked below. Okay, so now the way I usually work with uh, these techniques or um, this sort of hem is I knit one slack row so it's easy to pick up okay you'll understand in about a few minutes I guess okay so the first um, the first row that I do I am going to do on tension five and then I'm going to go ahead and lower my tension so tighten my tension to tension three okay so the layout I'm going to be working in is pushing every fifth needle forward, okay? So I've got four untouched and then the fifth needle, four in between, fifth needle forward and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and push forward all of the fifth um, needles forward into hold position. 
section and then on my carriage now i'm using brother again um i am going to move my holding cam from n to h okay there's just the one for me now if you're using silver reed you'll have two cams you can go ahead and push both of them to one if you've got any other machine just google the information and you should find it okay so you knit one normal row right to left and you knit one on hold okay or tuck and then i'm going to go ahead and move my cam back to normal and then knit one and then push the fifth needle forward again and then knit on hold again so move my cam back to H and knit one move your cam back to normal and knit one okay so what we're doing just to explain it to you quickly is we're knitting one row on hold and one row as normal one row on hold and one as normal okay and we are going to do the way i'm counting this is in sets of the tuck okay so i have now done two tuck um sets and i'm going to do about five um for this okay so i'm going to push the fifth needle forward again and come back to h knit one and then back to N, knit one. And then just go ahead and do so five times. So five sets of tuck. Now, what you can do, I mean, obviously this is a little bit of a lengthy um, method of doing it. You can actually have a punch card and then you can use your tuck cams to quicken the process. But obviously I'm just showing you the technique, so I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just gonna do it manually. Personally, I don't find it that time consuming, but it really is up to you. So one on hold, and one on normal. So I've done one, two, three, four. We're going to go ahead and do it once more. Okay, so I've now done five tuck sets. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and increase my tension back to five and knit one normal row. Now, essentially that is called my slack row. Okay, so the way these sort of trims usually work is you do one slack row to start off. You do your normal trim and then you do one slack row in the middle and you repeat the trim on the top end and then end with one slack row. That is usually how um, I work with sandwich trims if you are familiar with the term or the technique. Um, now this is just sort of like another method of doing a hem. So this can be on the bottom of your swatch or your garment, but I am just showing you how to do it within your fabric to create a lovely layered effect. Okay, so I've done my middle slack row and now we're going to repeat this, but we're going to be doing it the other way around, okay? Now, if you remember on the bottom end, we were doing our hold rows from left to right. Now, this time we're going to do our hold rows from right to left. First thing first, have, um, cam on hold, and then we're going to go ahead and push the fifth needles forward again, and then just repeat the process. I'm gonna do one on hold and then come back to normal and then one come back to h and push your needles forward one on hold one on normal so i've done two about now and i'm going to do three more sets one more left right okay so I'm going to do my tension back to five and I'm going to do one row so that's just my slack row okay and now what I'm going to do is take my weights off because I just find it slightly easier 
and grab a hold of a single prong transfer tool. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to go into each of these stitches here, okay? So that's your very first row of the viscose. So each of these stitches here. Now, to me, they look like teardrops and that's how I personally remember what they look like. But if you are a knitter, you should sort of understand the way a stitch looks, okay? So we are going into each of these loops and we're going to pick each stitch and place it on the needle, okay? So I'm gonna start with the very first. Now, if you just like stretch your fabric out a little bit, you should be able to locate the very first one and just place it on the needle and just pull it forward. Now that's the easiest method of doing so. And now go into the second one and place it on the needle into the third onto the needle and then just continue to do so. So placing each stitch. I find that when I hold the fabric or the knit like this, I can actually see it a little bit clearer. Now, the reason you do a slack row to start off with is so you can actually see the stitches a little bit easier. Now, if you knitted this on a tighter tension, imagine knitting something on tension two or something, you'll find, you'll find it really hard to look at the stitches and actually place them on the needles. Um, for practice, what you can do is actually knit it even um, slacker. So I've knitted on tension five, you can go up to seven if you like, just for practice. So we're, we are obviously just lifting each of the stitches and placing them on the needles. Um, another sort of, I suppose, name for this technique can be manual tuck. It is similar and also it can sort of give you like a little mock ripple effect. If you do knit on the dubiers, if any of you have ever knitted on a dubier machine, um, you must obviously be familiar with a ripple stitch. This can be a little bit similar, okay, in terms of your effect. Now I've done all of my lifting. I've lifted all my stitches and I'm left with just that cotton yarn on the back. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my comb again, place it on my knit and put my rubber weights back on. And I'm gonna go ahead and knit one row. Okay, so I've done my first set of um, the hem, okay? Now, at this point, if you like, you can just do some random techniques. So I am going to go ahead and do some sort of uh, transfer work and some tucking. So I think what I'm going to work with is transferring every fourth needle over to my right. So transfer every fourth needle and push all of those empty needles right to the back of the bed into non-working position. Push the center needle forward of those working needles. Cam on hold position, change your yarn. So you can of course, again, use any yarn you like. Um, I am going to use <laughs> all of my favorite yarns, of course. I'm going to use my cotton tape as usual. And I'm going to knit two rows on hold position on tension eight. And now I'm simply going to move my cam back to normal, change my yarn to the metallic viscose two ends, change my tension back down to five, push all of these needles forward all of these working needles, sorry. And I'm going to knit two rows. Okay, and then I'm going to push all of the non-working needles into working position, and I'm going to knit two rows in the tape yarn. And now I'm going to push 
are every other needle forward into hold position. Move my cams back to hold and knit four rows in the metallic viscose. And I'm going to swap back over to the mercerized cotton cam back to normal position and knit four. Okay, so this is of course, again, just a few techniques that I'm filling up in between each of those little hems that we're doing or with those little um, layers of trims or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so now we are going to basically repeat that little process that we did with the shiny viscose and we're going to do it with another yarn. Okay, so I'm going to be using two ends of this peach yarn um, and obviously like I mentioned it um, shrinks when you steam it and when you press it. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and thread this yarn up and the tension that I'm going to use this on is going to be I think tension two but like I said we start off with a slack course okay so I'm going to do my slack course on tension five as one row. I'm going to go down to tension two and move my cam back to hold position, push every fifth needle forward. So we're just repeating what we did at the bottom. Now you can't change the layout, so I'm doing every fifth needle, but you can um, change it to every third, every fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, whatever you want. Okay, and I'm going to do one round hold. Go back to normal, one row, back to hold, push your needles forward. One row, back to normal, one row, and we're going to do this about, I think we'll just do it five times again. Right, so we've done the five times. We're gonna do one row on as a slack course, which is tension five. And I go back to tension two, cam back on hold and repeat um, right to left, okay. One on hold, one on normal, and then four more times. Right, so I've done that five times. And I'm going to do one on as a slack course to end with. And now we're going to go ahead and lift the stitches up. So I'm going to go back to removing all of the weights. Okay, so just like we did again right at the bottom, we're going to go down to the first row of the peach. Okay, so the first bottom row into each of these stitches as we're going to pick them up one at a time. So starting right at the first one on the left, lift and just place it on the needles 
as they go along. Now it may seem a little bit difficult at, difficult at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually quite simple. The lighting for me is quite terrible today, um, so I hope this is actually still clear um, to understand and actually see. I do apologise. Okay, so once you've got to the end of it, put your weights back on, river weight back on as well, and neat one row. So that should be your second set done. Now, at this point, um, you can actually go ahead and knit some more sort of like techniques over this and sort of continue the scalloped hems um, to create the layers, or you could sort of just knit only a few plain rows and do another scalloped hem and then just repeat to make it a bit more dense. Um, so that is basically um, the end of the technique. Um, now it is actually quite a lot, there is actually quite a lot that you can actually play around with um, in regards to the layout and in regards to using your yarns. Now if you noticed, I obviously use the shiny viscose and the, and the shrinking viscose for this technique. You can obviously use uh, different ones, like lighter ones. You can also, a little tip to give you is you can try elastic, it might actually pull it all in and it might make it interesting. Um, I haven't tried it, but I might do it after this. Um, anyway, so I hope you did enjoy the technique and I hope you've been learning loads. Do share your um, outcome, your experiments with me to do with knit, of course. Um, and follow me on Instagram, do DM me or tag me, that would be amazing. It'd be really good to see how you get on with these techniques. And do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, so you don't miss any of my uh, knit videos. Anyway, I hope to see you next week. Goodbye.